Hello, everyone. My name is Monica Williamson, and I am the Engagement Associate at SMU Data Arts. I would also like to take a moment to introduce two of my colleagues, Katie Ingersoll, who is our Director of Programs, and Dan Gordon, who is the Support Center Manager at SMU Data Arts, who will be joining our webinar via chat and the Q&A feature. Thank you all for joining us to learn about the changes we've made to the Streamline Cultural Data Profile and how these changes will affect your data entry experience. Today's webinar will focus on the new narrative fields that have been added to the cultural data profile. This will be a quick and brief exploration as we'll only take about 30 minutes of your time. Now for some quick housekeeping, we will have a number of people on our webinar call today. So I'm going to keep everyone on mute for the presentation so that we can ensure good sound quality. At this time, we ask that you take a moment to explore some important features within Zoom. Uh, first, you have the Q&A feature where you are welcome to add any questions that you have about today's content there. And feel free to add questions at any time. We also have the chat feature, which will allow for you to reach to our team to help troubleshoot any technology issues that you may be experiencing. And for anyone who would like to utilize the closed captioning feature, to activate that feature, simply click the CC icon for closed captioning and it's found at the bottom of your Zoom feed to turn on that feature. If you need any assistance with any of the features that I've just spoken about, please send us a chat. And finally, to preempt the most common question that we do get, yes, we will have a recording of today's webinar and we'll send you a link uh, that you can review later or share with any of your colleagues who were unable to join us today. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So as we prepare for the changes, we've created four 30 minute webinars that explored the streamlined survey and provided context for the different types of organizations. And many of you were able to join us in our previous webinars where we went over the basics of the streamline and we also presented some tips for particular types of organizations. Today, our webinar will focus on the narrative fields of the CDP and each webinar in this series has been recorded for you to review and it's available on the link that you see on your screen. We have been talking throughout this series about, this, uh, about our intentions to strike a balance between the benefits of data and the capacity that is needed to track and collect it. We, as we were making decisions during the streamlining process, we were considering the benefits that each data point in our current survey in terms of research, insights, advocacy, and balancing those benefits against the time and efforts that it takes to collect and report on each of those data points and how that impacts our participating art organizations. We have depended on feedback from our users in many cases to get this balance right. One of the things that we've heard most consistently from our users is a desire to add context and explanations to their data and reports to funders. So we're implementing that feature in the new Streamline survey. And we'll, walk, we'll talk more about how this has been added into the CDP. Before we jump into those new fields, I do wanna review some of the key changes that have been made into the survey. We have reduced the number of line items in expenses, earned revenue, and the balance sheet. All of these sections are significantly shorter and the expense section in particular has been drastically reduced. We are trying a simpler approach with the program activity section. In the current profile, you will fill, you filled out a separate section for each type of program you've provided. And we've heard that it can be difficult to enter your data spread out over so many different sections. So within the new CDP, there'll be just one program activity section standard to all organizations and you will enter all of your attendance into one place. Finally, we've removed many of the detail sections. Many of the sections were optional in the previous CDP, but they did add to the overall length of the survey, so we've removed them. You can see a copy of the new survey at the link that you see on your screen. So that brings us to the goals for today's webinar. 
uh, we plan to introduce the new narrative fields. And this includes exploring where they are in the survey and how they'll look on your funder report. We'll provide some guidance and a few examples about how to use these fields. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with asking the question, why are we adding narrative fields into the CDP? Our focus at SMU Data Arts has always been on cultural data, and that includes how to capture the work of the cultural field in numbers and data points. But the reason we collect that data is to better tell the story of a vibrant sector. Our team has worked to streamline the survey. We spent a great deal of time reaching back to you, the users, on um, these recent changes. And we heard from many organizations that it does them a disservice to only present data with no contextual information in reports to funders. So the new narrative fields in the CDP are intended to rectify that issue. We know that every organization has a story to tell, but here are some common examples of when we think these fields may be most appropriate Many organizations have strong non-financial assets that are key to their organization's success. They may not always be directly reflected in the financial data. For example, organizations that depend greatly on volunteer time and community support to run their programs will look smaller in scope relative to organizations that rely on paid professionals. We also thought about organizations with unique programming in truth, the numbers we collect about programs are standard. However, we learned more that every organization's programs are different and this space for a narrative allows organizations to highlight what's unique about them. Organizations going through a transition or periods of changes, such as a leadership change or a capital campaign can utilize these narrative spaces to explain any changes within their data. And finally, organizations facing unusual circumstances. In fact, most organizations are in this position right now with this global pandemic. But even after this period, the unexpected can happen and change things for an organization. We're going to take a look at two different types of narrative fields, but first we'll start with the funder report narratives. Let's take a moment to explore the narrative fields in more depth and how they will appear on the funder report. First, these are brief narrative fields that appear at the end of key sections of the data profile, specifically in the revenue, expense, balance sheet, and program activity sections. We wanted to clarify that each narrative section is optional, but if you do add information into the sections, the narratives will appear in your funder reports to all funders, and they will appear for each year in the funder report. And there's also a character limitation of 500 characters. The narrative fields are intended as annotations and explanations of the data in your report. They are not intended to replace any additional narrative portions for your grants. We encourage users to stay focused on explanations of the data within the fields. This text below is 500 characters, just to give you an example of how long these narratives could possibly be. And now let's take a look at an example within the CDP. Here, we can see an organization has entered a narrative to explain a shift in their earned revenue this year. And here, we can see how this narrative would appear on their funder report. Now, let's apply this function to some examples. We'll spend a moment exploring how two example organizations may utilize these fields. Our first example is a community arts program. They rely extensively on volunteers from the community to make their programs possible, which they know is not necessarily expressed clearly in the data. Additionally, they have programming based on long-term interactions and relationships with families. 
This means they have a smaller overall attendance number and but they invest much more of their time and build relationships with each of those participants. They want to be able to report that clearly within their funder report. The first narrative note they will add is in the expense section. They plan on explaining the large amount of volunteer community support to provide context to their work. And here, we can see that they have added that note within the expense sections. Next, they'll add a note in the program activity to provide more context about their programs. And this is how that narrative would be added in the program activity and audience sections of the survey. And here, we can see how this will look in the organization's funder report. Let's continue with the second example and let's see how the example History Museum may use the narrative fields for their organization. For some background, the board members for example History Museum are creating a reserve for facility repairs and some preservation. And to do that, they have just wrapped up a capital campaign to grow that reserve. As they're working to complete their survey, they would like to share this new strategy with their funders. To do that, they will strategically use their funder report narrative sections to highlight their work and provide context to the data points reflected in their funder reports. And to do this, they will add a note during the years of the capital campaign to note that it was happening and to highlight its progress. So again, here we can see how this organization will add their notes to the profile. And they'll also add a note in the year after the, ca the capital campaign to explain the trends in their revenue because of this campaign. And here we can see this note being added. And finally, they'll add a note in the balance sheet to highlight their increase in net assets in the form of their building reserve. And this is how it'll look in the survey. And here are how those notes will appear in their funder report. As mentioned earlier, the notes from each year in the report will appear. So they will allow readers to track the effects of the capital campaign throughout all of the years in the report. So those are two in-depth examples, but there are a variety of ways that you may be able to utilize the notes in the narrative fields. And here are just a few ideas. You can share ways that you've responded to the global pandemic that we're experiencing. You can also uh, note if your organization was going through a planned deficit. Um, if you are in the process of sh shifting your strategy, um, you can use the space to briefly explain how your strategic decisions are reflected in your data. Or if you have a leadership transition, or finally, if you're experiencing an uh, unexpected loss in funding, you can explain the circumstances around those losses. Those are just a few examples, but we know that those fields will be used in a variety of ways. So we want to take a moment to invite you to place into the chat feature the ways that you think your organization may utilize these fields. Um, we'll share a few of these out loud at the end of the presentation, but I do want to take a moment for um, you to find the chat feature and add how you may be preliminarily thinking about using those narrative fields. As you type in your experience, I'm going to continue forward as we'll come back and read out those responses aloud. The second type of narrative field uh, we will mention today is the description fields. Throughout the survey, there are line items at the bottom of the section where you can enter anything that was not included above. These line items may be used more than ever since we have removed some of the details in the survey. 
For each of these lines, there will also be a place to enter brief descriptions of the major items in those lines. These description lines appear in earned revenue, contributed revenue, then personnel expenses, the balance sheet, and program activity. Some are even required if you have filled out the line they are describing. And if they're required, they'll be marked with an asterisk. Here is one example of a description field. These fields, these description fields may show up in your funder reports, but there are also funder reports that do not include them. Here is an example. Note, this is different than the funder report narratives we've just looked at, which are all included in all of the funder reports. So let's do a quick review. For the new streamlined survey, you have the option of two different types of narrative fields within the CDP. The funder report narratives, which are paragraphs annotate, annotating sections of your data profile. And description lines, which are brief phrases describing one line item. These are all notes, but they can be outward facing. I also want to mention the internal notes feature. This is something that exists within our current data profile and will continue to exist. This allows you to add notes for your own reference. And these are internal notes, so they do not appear on any of your funder reports. Looking at the survey, the internal notes feature can be found here. Let's talk about what will happen to your current data. All of your current data will be transformed to the new format. This will mean that trend reporting will be possible from one format to another in your funder reports. And we'll make that available, we'll make that uh, data available through a transformation manual that will provide details about how the transformation happened. Notations about how the data was transformed have also been left in the notes fields we just look at. If you need access to your data in the previous format, you can contact our support center and it can be shared with you in Excel or CSV file, or we can share specific data points with you. So let's talk about some next steps. You're welcome to download a copy of the new data profile so you can see what line items will be collected in depth. We have also set aside two weekends to transform your previous data and to implement the new survey. You should plan for the CDP platform to be down for both of those weekends that are listed on your screen. You can log in on December 21st to see your data in the new format. We'll also send you an email when the transformation has been completed. So this webinar will actually conclude our Survey Streamline webinar series, and we invite you to check the link provided on the screen to rewatch the recordings of the other topics. We kicked off the series with a webinar that reviewed the basics of the new survey, and that walks through each of the sections and the changes you'd expect to see. So feel free to start with that one if you haven't. Our other webinars looked at data entry tips for audited organizations and data entry tips for unaudited organizations and organizations with under $50,000 in expenses. And today, again, we finish by looking at the new narrative sections within the CDP. We do want to share that we will have another live webinar on January 21st that will look at the basics of the survey and feel free to explore our events calendar for more information on how to register to that webinar. Before we transition to the questions that you may have left us, I want to look back at this question that we posted a little bit earlier in our webinar. Um, I wanted to see what you were excited to use the narrative fields for. Um, I'm gonna switch gears to uh, Dan could you share some of the feedback that we received in the chat? 
Thank you so much, Monica. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Dan Gordon, the Support Center Manager here. Um, the, there haven't been a whole lot of questions. I feel like uh, the one that needs most clarification is kind of the timing of when the release for Streamline is happening. Um, we did have a couple of people asking on that. Um, the changes and the accessibility and availability of these narrative fields will start on the 21st, and that's Monday. Um, other than that, there aren't a whole lot of other questions to address at this time. Awesome, Dan. Were there any comments about how people were planning to use the narrative fields? I do not see that in the um, Q&A at this time, no. There are a couple, hi, this is, this is Katie. Hello, everyone. Um, there are a couple of comments in the chat, which I can share. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so hi everyone, my name is Katie. I'm the programs director at SMU Data Arts. Um, so we do see in the chat, a lot of you are mentioning COVID-19 um, and just the, the sort of changes that your organization has um, experienced over the last year, um, drops in funding, drops in expenses, um, things like that. So I think that's definitely gonna be something that will be on a lot of people's minds as they report on their finances after um, for this very unusual year. Um, also, a couple of folks who have recently had a capital campaign, so kind of matching the, one of the examples we gave in the presentation, and um, someone who also went through a relocation, so a lot of change at people's organizations, which they will be um, using those narrative fields to reflect. Thank you, Katie. Um, in the meantime, we have a question that come in, if we enter data into the profile prior to December 21st, will it be automatically carried over to the new or updated survey? Great. Um, yeah, so the answer to that is um, yes. If you do enter any data into your profile, any data that's already been entered on the platform will be automatically transformed into the new format, even if you haven't completed that profile. So if you have a profile in progress, um, that's OK. Um, we will transition it over to the new format, and you'll finish that profile with the new CDP format. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you for answering those questions for us, Katie and Dan. Uh, that is going to conclude our time. And we would, again, just like to thank you for joining us today and for any of the other webinars that you were able to join. We appreciate your time and continued partnership. Um, if you do have additional questions about the new survey or topics that we've reviewed in our past Streamline webinars, feel free to contact our amazing support center. Um, I have provided their contact information below. Um, we are going to remain on our webinar space for a few more moments for any additional questions that have come up. So if you would like to have your questions answered or hear the additional questions answered out loud, please feel free to stay on. However, if you don't have any questions, again, thank you for joining us and that will conclude our time. <laughs>